Hello everyone on the internet, thanks for tuning in. And welcome to another episode with me, Maswada Bushido, and with my tiger ball on the other side, it's Cyberman! I... What did you think? I have no comment. <laughs> I'm... Like, that's... For everyone that is new to this channel, Flavor Man tends to come up with some random crap. Ra right. Very so random. Let's get on with it. One let's get on with it. Okay. Yeah. That was interesting of an intro from you, man. Anyway. Yeah. So, yes, that is the gong changer from Geki Violet. And yesterday we will be doing a Juden, sorry, Juken Sentai Geki Ranger. So, <laughs> yep. And so, thus, let us start with the build ups. Go thy flavor, man. Okay. Uh, the very first time I saw what they looked like, it was literally you had the poster of, I think it. Must have been like you got the red in the middle with the blue and the yellow standing. And well, I know one of them had like the nunchaku like standing like that. I think it might have been blue, or it might have been red. yellow, or it red. might have been red. Red. Yeah, it was always going to be the one I guess last. Anyway, the first thing that just sort of just jumped out at me is they didn't have a belt going across their waist. That was literally my first impression. I was like, it looks cool, but it feels weird because of that wear. They're not wearing a belt. But. How many hasn't yet? I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I mean, if someone wants to prove me wrong, fine. But I'm pretty sure every Sentai, you know, like even when I look through, like when well, I flick through, it's never stood out. Oh, they're not wearing a belt. They are normally wearing a belt. Zoo Ranger belt. Uh, even Kaka Ranger belt. Uh, go kart, you know, like go. Um, even as a utility belt, you mean? No, just eight. Well, uh, I think some some of the rangers in Sentai's past, their belts serve a function, like what? Zoo Ranger. They've got their Dino Buckler on the front when you know. But again, it doesn't really serve a purpose. No, no, no. But yeah, again, it's like it's like a, it's like it's a utility belt. I don't think so. I think like yeah. All right, Zoo Ranger. They would have had the gun holsters, but then again, that might have just been Power Rangers. I'm not sure about Zoo Ranger. Uh, da, 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 da. I, hate, well, no, I hate to say this, but technically, Goonja also had a belt or like a, a that dunk. Was of... That was afterwards. That was afterwards. Yeah, fair. I know, but but you know what I mean. They do have a sort of. But again, I'm talking my first impression. You know, um, you know, like I, I I don't remember seeing the Mecha straight. Yeah, you know, like I think I might have down the line before Ep One. I might have seen what the Mecha looks like and. Yeah, you know, like the is it? I'm trying to remember the name of the Gatai. Um, it's not Gekio, is it? <laughs> um, yeah, the the Mecha Gatai. You know, where you've got red on top, blue and yellow as the feet. Anyway, I might have seen that at some point, and I was like, yeah, that looks cool. But again, just that very first image of the three Rangers, I was like, they're not wearing a belt. My first impression was, um, <clears throat> well, actually, to be more precise, I, I think I went in purely blind on this one, and that, um, oh. and uh, what was it? I am. Um, how should I say this? Just literally after episode one, I couldn't give a crap for the sort of um, skimpy swimsuit. So you're describing him as swimsuit. So I'll neither agree nor disagree. But it's just, just... Just, no, just seriously, it's like spandex swimsuits. Seriously, it's like what... So that, that is kind of the point, because... It, it feels, know, I think maybe... it yeah, feels like a very throwback to Mighty Morphin. Not, no, not, not, not Zoo Ranger, but it feels like a bit of a throwback to like a classic style outfit, if that makes sense. I know, I know what you're saying, but I like, disagree. Like, very I less, is, like less is more kind of thing, but even still, anyway. 
Oh, no, this is it, because there's less is more, but literally all there was was the designs down the sides and the Thunder logo. That was it. I'll be honest, I really like the helmets. The helmets look really cool. Yes. Uh, I mean, I, I was kind of... I do remember sort of, like, explanations of the weapons, like Geki Tonfa and stuff. Uh, so, you know, I kind of thought, all right, they've got some badass weapons. They've got Tonfa, they've got Nanchaku. Uh, and again, I'm going... Pr- I mean, you've already gone into what you thought up, uh, Ep 1 onwards, but, you know, me... Rumor-wise, again, I vaguely remember seeing the mecha in, like, catalogue form. Uh, seeing the three ranges, I thought the helmets looked awesome. I thought the suits looked, again, it just felt weird. And it did feel really spandexy, like, really tight skin. Mm. I was kind of like, mm, you know, me again, that... Because, you know, like, even you take Z-Ranger, at least I've got sort of decent design. And it, you know, and you at least think, at least you at least look at the spandex, it looks kind of thick. I mean, even Bokenja, which was the one before it, uh, you know, it was all plenty of design. And, you know, you actually could see some thickness to the spandex, whereas these just look skin tight. Anyway, so you've already gone, like, onto, like, the first steps because you said you went in blind. L- watching Ep 1, I just remember being unimpressed. By our heroes, uh, you've got. I'm trying. I oh, know Jan's the girl. Uh, blue Geki Blue. Um, I think his name was Tetsuo or something. Jan uh. is the red. Oh, Lan. Ran is the yellow. Run, run. yeah. And. Uh, Right, because I only remember Geki Violet is for Kami Go, hence, you know, I've got his gong changer. Um, <coughs> so, I know Geki Blue was Geki Violet's younger brother, right? So, his surname was for Kami as well. Retsu. Retsu, yeah. Retsu, Retsu. Retsu, yeah. Uh, so... You know, uh, okay, so going from F1, I was very un- I was very sort of underwhelmed. I mean, they kind of set up blue and yellow with a decent story, but I'm just kind of like, you know, you mean, you know, looking back on it, I can see they were going for the fun thing with uh, Jan. I'm trying to remember his name now. So they were going for the fun thing with Geki Red, but I was a bit like, ugh, this feels puerile. I think they were doing, yeah, looking back, I kind of feel they were kind of doing that on purpose. But what really gripped me was the setup for the villains, because you've got Rio and Mele, I think her name was, the mm-hmm. lizard woman. The chameleon. You know, yeah, the chameleon lizard. Anyway, and so they, you know, they kind of, they, you know, re- just seeing like all this darkness around Rio, it's like, okay, what's that about? That you know, that sort of pulled me in, that reeled me in, that made me want to know more, and I'm like, all right, this series has promise. So I thought, so the only thing that kept me going in the first half of Gekka Angel was Rio, and just trying to unravel his story bit by bit. And, you know, uh, I mean, not even without spoiling it, it was Rio, I believe I was right on this, so I wasn't too impressed with, like, the setup for the heroes. Uh, you know, and then you had like some fluffy cat as their mentor. That really threw me off. Uh, but yet, you know, I wanted to know more about the villains. And then going to the second half, I really, you know, I literally bought into it. I was, you know, I was like, the first half was so poor, it was almost filler. And then, sort of, say, after they get their Shigeki power, I think it's called, like, when the suits change into white and stuff. I, you know, that was where I really, sort of, bought into it. So, what do you think of the whole, you know, what did you make of the story of Geki Ranger? Well, I'm going to tell him for what you said in regards to, like, the slight early episodes and then leading on to the story. So, I can see where you came from in the, thinking the first half was a filler. However, um, coming from someone who kind of likes martial arts, I, I thought the whole theme of martial arts 
was very interesting to me, to be honest, each having their own style and so on and so forth. What's more, <clears throat> the fact that uh, Red was or is a... Uh, should we He's say... He's like a comic rookie Red. He's like a mixture of rookie and comic. He is, is, but at the same time, he has... But his theory as well. He was theory. He was passionate. He was, and the, the, the actor that played his role was very good in like, trying to deliberately give him like a very childish persona. He was a very vivid personality in my opinion. Very, but bearing in mind he did grow up in the jungle as well, so his um, was, language... Yeah. yeah it, like, apparently he grew up with tigers, and um, his... Oh, lang- it was gorillas. Tigers, that's why they called him uh, the Tiger Boy. No, was it? I'm sure there was a. Gor- I'm sure he was with gorillas in the first episode. He was like hanging around with gorillas, wasn't he? Tigers. Ah, whatever. Anyway, it's been years since I've yeah, seen Yeah, I know, movie. I know. Anyway, so <clears throat> and then, like you mentioned, you've got Master Shafi, who's this big fluffy yellow cat. Yeah. Um, and his hot assistant. Okay, um, but even still. I just, I just find there's a, um, even though it's a bit, it feels a bit long, there's a good story um, in regards to between John, Leo, um, Go, oh, no, and then no, no, was... hang on, Shafu and the assist, and Shafu's assistant as well. There's a brilliant storyline there as well. Um, what's more, um, it's. The, the character development I felt was a bit slow for some of Definitely. them. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna That's say it. who, but some did take their time in trying to shine, should we say? So that's kind of it. Again, I was sort of drudging through the first half, and then the second half really picks up. I mean, when you mentioned that, uh, what's it? You know, you watch for Leo and Melee, yes, I'm not going to deny it. Those two pretty much were the show stealers, thunder stealers. But for... I like how, yeah, massive spoiler alert here, but where sort of Jan, the red, Geki Red, screw it, Geki Red, Geki Red, how Geki Red and Rio's story tied together at the end, that was clever in my opinion. But needless to say that I just like the whole, yeah, the the backstories. Honestly, it's the way when they introduce it, it's done so well that I was like, wait, what kind of thing? So, um, yeah, that's I think. And then also, I actually didn't mind the extra masters in this, like the whole. I mean, we'll come to that when we talk about... Well, no, the char- we can come to that now, when we, because we're going on to characters now. So, anyway. while I'm tying it in then, so... <clears throat> just to start off with the mains. Red, I honestly didn't mind um, his... I felt for his character, having him as a Red, I thought was a unique Red. If that makes sense. You say unique. I, w- yeah, it, I mean, I don't I agree I, with you. I would say Red was a big gamble... No. You know, yeah. No, 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 no. What I mean by that is his character. It was kind of like. His ca- I mean, my opinion is he was decorated, but just more vivid, more out there. Yeah. He uh, was, uh, was, like, was basically decorated on crack. I can unfortunately relate. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, then yellow being the leader of the team, which I thought was. Oh, uh, well, like- they do this every so often in Sentai. I don't buy it. Red's always going to be the leader to me. Yeah. I mean, we're well, traditionally... Big with... Magic Ranger was green. Uh, Deca Ranger, well, they kind of made a joke about it being pink. But, no. Nah, well, I see what you mean, you know, because she was, like, the most advanced. I know what you mean. Um, but, yeah, so... Uh, but, yeah, we are traditionalists, so... But... When we get to Magic Ranger, I mean, Magic Ranger is understandable <laughs> because, uh, what's it? It, it was the eldest it's, brother. It's he was the eldest. Yeah. That yeah. would make sense. Whereas in this one, though, 
it's like okay, so you're giving it to someone who has more training than the other two, or they feel they can handle it. So, okay, we'll I see how this goes. It I just... don't care. I just, I swear. but I know what you. I know, you know. I know story wise, she was the leader, and you know she was doing like the fast punching and stuff. I mean, because I think I can't remember what. I mean, because we haven't got onto blue yet, <laughs> but. I can't remember red and yellow's phrase, but I remember blue's was fantastic technique. And that's a phrase I still use a lot to this day for some odd reason. But I remember, like, you know, because she had... I think her thing was meant to be strength, wasn't it? Because I don't think it was red, or it might have been red, but I think it was yellow, cause she, or she might have had something to do with speed. And then blue was about the technique. And then when he got with Geki Bat, it was abandoned the technique, which totally blew my mind. With um, uh, blue, though, honestly, I just felt like I had a complete utter deja vu because I thought, oh, see, okay, there's blue. Instantly, I thought, uh, go on, blue. Like, completely, I can just go like that. What do you mean? Go on Jules afterwards, you do realise No, that, regardless, right? like, when I saw Go on Jules, right, and seeing Go on Blue... Did you watch, did you watch Geki Ranger after Go on or something? No, actually these were downloads for me at the time, and then I just felt... Okay, this is what I mean. I felt like Blue was just there. I mean, for the record, I watched Geki Ranger while it was being broadcast, but anyway. Yeah, that's the same as me. So, like, honestly, for me... I thought blue was just one of those that's just there. You felt it was a bit generic and didn't stand out? Pretty much. Like, well, I, well, I'll kind of agree to you to an extent. I think, but for me, I saw him more of a subtle, I saw him as a subtle character. Like, you know, I actually liked, you know I mean, again, because his storyline was pretty much more You're scratching. To, uh, you know, like, his storyline was more about sort of being part of the whatever the hell that organisation was called. I forget it now. Uh, and, you know, he was like, oh, I've got to be the best. I've got to be good at my technique. And then you've got the Geki Bat storyline where he's, like, a fan of the technique and he starts dancing and stuff. I mean, I think he was all right, but, you know, he was a very subtle character. But I felt he came more, you know, he came out more when his brother... Geki Violet uh, was brought in. So, you know, I will go on to Geki Violet right now. Well, hang, 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 hang on, hang on, just before I mean, unless that. Unless you want to talk about one of the... I mean, because we've already covered the main three, haven't we? Yeah, but then they get their own uh, little armaments each for... Um... Okay, so you cover them. I mean, again, I, th- I, mean, I would say because Yellow origin- initially had the elephant, yep. Blue had the bat, no, again, yeah, blue had, had the bat, and then uh, red, had, red the shark. had the shark. That was the funny character. The shark one used to make me laugh. So apart from that, there's not really much I can say. You know, like Master Shafu, he was very quirky. Uh, you know, I liked how he had like his little triangle thing. Um, if I had a triangle, that would have been my intro, by the way. But I didn't, so I've got my Geki Gong changer out anyway. Um, Geki Gong, lol. Gong, Gong change or whatever. Anyway, um, alright, so is there any more you wanted to say about them? Because I'm dying to talk about Geki Violet. I'll be honest, the moment he came in, I just felt he was a show scene stealer like Leo Malay, but the moment he came in, it's like probably one of the. How can I say, now that I think about it, one of the prominent. Um, uh, extra um, Sentai characters rather than, if you know what I mean, like 6th Ranger slash Extra Ranger. Um, well, he's an Extra Ranger. I think they do class him as a 6th Ranger. Yeah, like, yeah, so you get what I mean, right? Like an Extra Ranger kind of... He had that big, bold entry and I feel like he's on one of my top three of the big entries in a good way. I mean... Oh my god, I cannot talk about Geki Violet enough. I mean, you know, like, I think 
his, I mean, this is it. I'm not too sure whether I, I mean, let me think. Because I know you've got, got Gower Wolf from Gower Ranger. I can't remember when I watched Gower Ranger exactly. You, you mean Gower you Silver? Know. Yeah, Gower, yeah, the wolf. Gower yeah. Silver. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Because they had very similar stories. But just watching it as, just watching Geki Wolf. Uh, he, you know, his backstory is cool, but when he comes, yeah, you know, when he comes out of it, I, again, you can call him show stealer or whatever you like. I absolutely love Go for Kami. He was just total badass. You know, uh, I'm not sure whether he was inspired by Muay Thai or something or other. You know, like just his style of fighting. You know, the suit was awesome. I have been dying since. Like nine, you know, whenever it was, I first watched Mighty Morphin. I was always like, they should bring a Purple Ranger in. They should bring a Purple Ranger in. And finally, Geki Ranger delivered that for me. I cannot stress that enough. So we'll talk about the costumes later. But just wow, his his you know his uh, his armor just yeah, totally awesome. Agreed. I mean, the fact that he's also he had the pressure of being the first Violet as well that they introduced. It, Hats that, off. Hats off. For... He yeah. was a bad. I mean, that was like um, a milestone for Sentai. Ma- massive milestone, absolutely. Massive, yeah. Oh. yeah, I mean, they literally upped their game. They literally upped their game in Sentai. Honestly, Gekka Ranger, they... they, they... <sighs> I mean, just backtracking category-wise, uh, you know, they did, you know, this was a sort of martial art thing Sentai, which you know, because I kind of thought, you know, coming off of Mighty Morphin, I kind of thought, oh, well, shouldn't all Sentai, you know, shouldn't all Power Rangers and Sentai be like this? But then when you sort of really look at it, sort of, you know, when they go into Turbo and stuff, it's like, yeah, it's not really, you know, where's the martial arts in it? And then you just kind of lose it. And then for me personally, Geki Ranger brought it back. Yeah. Agreed. So, anyway, you mean, so yeah, but coming... also apparently, Die Ranger was a martial arts thing. Die Ra- I mean, yeah, Die Ranger was, but again, uh, I mean, I only watched Die Ranger last year anyway. But you know, but if you're looking at Mighty Morphin, that was all sort of around the same time. Cause you've got Mighty Morphin one, two, three. That's going Zoo Ranger, Die Ranger, and then Kaku Ranger anyway. But. Uh... Uh, I think yeah. Coming back to characters now. No, no. I, okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly say this right. Go, Leo, melee. That's best honestly. Oh, what? Well, in fact, are we okay? Maybe not melee. melee. Not melee, but yeah, Leo, uh, go, and maybe Shafu and assistant. If I had to really throw it in there, but they Shafu, were. The assistant wasn't really. Yeah, the assistant was just the assistant really, and then she had her daughter in it as well. But my point is, but, right, they were like the real prominent, and yes, Red as well. But I wouldn't, that's... I wouldn't say the assistant. And okay, obviously, fine. the story-wise was very heavy on Red, especially second half. But I will say, and you're right, you know, and I'm, I'm, tr- I'm sort of trying to come onto him, well, trying to talk about him now. Is I think his name was Ken Geki Chopper. I thought I thought it was funny. I thought it was cool. I mean, he you know he had a much more subtle story. He did. The others, you know, it was a much more subtle story. Um, yeah, he just kind of got half-assed drafted in. Uh, I mean, his out, you know, I mean, again, you know, he kind of had a swagger about him, mm. which was a lot more, you know, it was kind of cool, subtle, and he had a bit of a weird look and a weird personality. So I kind of thought it was cool. But just yeah, you know, just to quickly brush onto this because I'm not really going to talk about it. If you want to, you can. You've got the three other masters as well. There was a penguin. There was I think there was there a gorilla as well, yes. and then a, a gazelle. gazelle. I don't really remember that much about them, but I remember specifically not being very impressed with them as mecha. Um. Yeah. So that aside. Um. For me, I will say this. I've already said it, I know, but... Um, uh, Leo was an amazing... Or is an amazing villain. If not one of the best 
villains, standout villains I have ever seen. I wouldn't even argue. I mean, yeah, I mean, I could probably scrutinise it a bit more, but I totally agree. And just the way he came out at the end. I mean, even uh, even his yeah, weak fanboy over him for the rest of the actual show, but I mean, uh, whoever I'll designed say... his outfit. The outfit was a bit. Uh, I don't know. I thought that was a bit sort of. You think? I, I know, thought it but... had that nice big bulk, and then when he transformed into his lion, evil form, whatever you want to call it. Oh yeah, that the helmet. Yeah, that awesome. helmet was sick in a good way. Yeah, awesome. But no, when he was like in the temple, just sort of mincing around, I did kind of think, no, nah, that looks a bit pansy-ish. But when he was fighting it. When it came to, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, to talk about the rest of the villains, because we've already talked about Rio and Mele. Mele, again, I kind of, uh, I don't know, I kind of, even at the time, I didn't really buy into her whole fawning over Rio thing. Mm. Although that was a massive part of her, that was literally all her story. Um, I'm trying to remember, because there, there was quite a lot of generals, which kind of go over my head. Yeah, I don't want even want to start on that. But, so but of course... Then you've got Long, who I really like how he was just like, you know, like mincing around in the background for, I think he was brought in about 10, 15 episodes in. Yeah. And then he just turns out to be the, the villain. The big bad. The big bad. And, you know, this is what I really like um, because, you know, too often you'll see the main boss appear right at the end. And the Rangers will spend about two, three episodes fighting him. Done. Whereas this guy was there from the beginning. You know, they're fighting him all the time. And then he just becomes big bad. It's mental. So, I, you know, I mean, again, personality-wise, he's very sort of slippery, snaky, which was part of his persona. Would you, say, really like. would you say he's pretty much uh, a mix of... Oh, well, not mixed, but pretty much a relation to Ryoma from Gaim, the Lemon Arms guy. No. No, because you kind of, you could kind of see the psychotic intent in Ryoma, but with Long, it was so much more subtle. I mean, I think it's quite clever how Ge- how Geki Ranger overall had a real mix of vivid and uh, subtle characters. Now, what they begin in the intro is um, what I find is interesting. Like, there's these two classes, like good and evil, basically, pretty much still going on. A con- yeah, con- 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 it, it says yeah. that, but honestly, the, the because of how good the backstory is for everyone else, you completely sideline that, if that makes sense for me anyways. I think the first half was pretty much about the two schools. Schools, yes. You know, you've got... Uh, what is it? I'm just going over the intro in my head now. Geki Juken Beast Oars, and then Rin Juken Agugata. Um, well remembered. I'm not gonna deny that. No, well remembered. I, you know, I've got. I play. I mean, I'll talk about music later, but I, I play the intro all the time. You know, it's, it's. You know, uh, so yeah, I kind of think that the two schools, you know, at definitely. I mean, you know, maybe like first off, they're really playing it up, which might contribute to my opinion of it being a bit sluggish. But, yeah, second half, it's like, oh, these schools were set up because of evil power wanted to set Rio and Ran apart and stuff. You know, it's nuts. Um, right. What's next? So, I think yeah. we've, yeah, I was going to say, I think we've pretty much covered this in our talk already, but what do we think of the armor and outfits and just general Right. Sort of um, look? let me think on this one. Hey. For red, blue, yellow's base form, I could not give a crap. I'm sorry. I love the tone of the color. But I already talked about. Yeah, I know, I know. But so that's why I'm going to brush this by saying like I did not give a damn about the swimsuit latex style looking kind of thing. I couldn't give. What do you think of the shigeki look? 
Right, the Shin Geki. Shin, Shin. Huh? It's that's just S H I. There's no N. Oh, she geki. Okay, wait. Well, anyway, trust um, me. They, I, again, I know the song off by heart. She geki wo. Anyway, go on. Anyway, um, I found it interesting how where the, it, it's um where all the black was in the base form, and then it turns into white. Or grey, yeah. white. No, it's uh, basically, so... they're basically they're, they base they're basically all white, accented with their colours. Their colours, so yes. White with a red accent, white with a blue accent. I blue accent. I honestly felt there was way too much white to like. I thought it was over overpowering. I thought that was a welcome change. I thought that was a welcome change. In my I opinion. see where you're coming from, but I just I like Bokinger's sort of like. You know, because normally uh, when they have like a superpower, it's normally accented with whatever. Like, you know, uh, I don't know, it's really up. Like, you know, like take Greek, because, you know, like prior to Geki Ranger, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, Dragon Ranger had, was accented with the gold shield. You look at Bokenja, they had the Axel Tector. Uh, you look at. You know, Magi Ranger was sort of, you know, it was just a little more flary, and like Deca Ranger had like, you know, it was just they accented had, with no, black no, swap. No, they had swap. They ac- yeah, you know, I mean, again, but you know, their main colour was still red, blue, yellow, green. Uh, but it was but just this was a reverse. The black, the black. Again, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I liked how it was a welcome. I felt it was a welcome change. I'm gonna that I'm it was gonna... white, but accented with their colour, and I thought it looked really good. And again, and you know, it's kind of why I like Go Busters later on down the line. But you look at, you know, it has a very leather look. You know, it has like a bit of a leather look to it. And I thought the whole, you know, the fact that they had like, what is it, like Vents. a jetpack thing. Vents. Like, you know, so they were flying around. I thought that was insane. That, I give the vents, you know, vents, jetpack, well, vents pretty much, giving off their Geki power pretty much. Um, I'll give insane. that. Yeah, I like that. That was a nice change, but I still felt that the whole loss of colour was a bit too much for me. Um, I thought again, I thought it was welcome change. Yeah, well, anyway, no. that's your opinion. Um, Geki Chopper for me, I thought uh, suit wise, again, spandexy thing, uh, helmet. Interesting, unique, rhinoceros themed over him. Yeah, sure, alright. Um, and his... I like Jackie Chan. Yeah, and his outfit was pretty much based on a very karate-themed or martial arts-themed with the, the, his belt being like a, um, a, a, a martial arts belt, should we say, keeping it around him. Um, Leo, again, I loved his, um... Uh, yeah, I know. His and thingy. melee. And melee, I well, yeah, melee. Um, now, Violet. Violet, uh, I thought was. I thought it was quite elegant, but I'll. Just it wrap that. worked. Yeah. Black, the purple, it worked. I love his helmet. It was sleek. It was good. It it felt like a. It felt like a a hint of. Um, Gal Silver homage, but in a more unique style, if that makes sense. Like you get again, there's a lot of similar. Yeah, similarity. it got the Gal wolf Silver. reference, but but Toei did a unique style. Oh using... no, yeah. When it came to the look, when it came to the look, and even go for Kami's personality, no, without a doubt, it's totally different. But yeah, you know, there's a lot of similarities in general. The fact that they were like originally wolf monsters, blah blah blah. I mean, even the fact that he even had more armor than the original three when starting. It looks slick. It, it looks, looks slick. slick, and he even had like extra padding on his shoulders for like That's, extra fighting. Yeah, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's Muay Thai or something else that inspired him, but it yeah. looked like Muay Thai. Like MMA my time mix kind of thing. Seriously, it was ridiculous his style. Um, but yeah, so that's that. 
for me. What did you think of, like, you know, when they weren't in Henshin, when they weren't in armor, like, they had, like, a sort of uniform look, but with Geki Violet and Geki Chopper. Yes. I mean, yes. Uh, Geki Violet yes. had a biker look about him, which I've, uh, you know, I mean, I've got the matching jacket to that Geki, ch- to that gong changer, by the way. It's, you know, I I'm surprised, you, I'm surprised you're not wearing it. No, no, I thought I'd, I could have done. Now that you mentioned it, no, but I thought just bringing a gong changer out was enough. Anyway, but, uh, you know, I liked his biker look. And then, if anything, I also wanted to cosplay uh, Ken because he's got, like, that track tracky look. Which, that, yeah, very, you know, yeah, like very tra- laid-back. Yeah, like it's, it's almost like a laid-back gee style. Like a very... That's it. It is. Well, yeah, I, th- I don't know. I wouldn't... Com- yeah, you could compare it to a gi, but I, you know, I just spotted it a mile off as a track suit. And I'm oh like, no, sorry, yeah. and it was like a tracky with again, a hoodie, again, wasn't it? Got, because he, yeah, because he's got more of a subtle story, it just goes with his subtle half ass personality. Uh, and then, like and then you know, you like with three. Uh, what was her name? The yellow one. I can't remember Ran. her name. Ran. She can't. You know, like she had her like buttoned up blouse thing. And, you know, she kind of looked really uptight. And like blue kind of had that Chinesey look, and then I think red was just kind of like that. But again, it was so tatty, it kind of just sort of sidetracked anyway. So basically, they all had a similar uh, clothing, but they wore it in their own way. Indeed. Fair enough. I- I'm not gonna intervene. So, on this. what do we think of the weapons of Geki Ranger? Yes. Um, well, to be fair, uh, Kiki Violet didn't have any, let alone he didn't really need any, because, well, he... He's such a badass. Yeah, like, he just uses his elbows, knees, fists, legs, everything. He just doesn't need it. So anyway, that aside, um, right, Kiki Red gets a pair of nunchucks. Alright, never seen that before, that was a nice little... Change? Really? I'm, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure there must have been someone with an before. Oh, you're right. Oh, Ranger. My bad. Oh. Even I did. <gasps> yeah. Alright. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, because I think they start off with generic weapons because they give red nunchaku. And then, and then and this the is other what... two punch part. Like, no, no, no. See, punch... this is what I love. Blue gets Tomfers, and then um, and then ye- and yellow gets a staff, which is the combination of both Tomfers. I love that. I love that. Um, now, when it comes to Gek Chopper's weapon, which I find is very bizarre, it is. It's just some big ass thing. It's literally a cleaver. It's like you're holding a cleaver, like like with a. a a, a rhino's horn that's sharp. No, I thought... I'm trying to think. I thought he had, like, a big claw thing. Because I know the it, Shigeki form, they each had, like, a little... No, wait, 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 wait. One second, one second, one second. Like Weird. a Wolverine sort of thing. Like yeah, I know. Geki Chopper. Geki like Chopper's one... Thing. This is the thing. He had two finishes with that weapon. One is, like, a slash. The other, you fold the um, blade over, and then it has the hand... And then you can pretty much shoot. Oh. Yeah. Like finger but, pistols. But then at if the I'm same not time, and what I thought was re- yeah, you know, it was a very uniform look. The way that each armament mecha wire, you know, with each men, with each additional mentor came an additional weapon, and then an additional mecha. Yes. So let me think. Right. The elephant. Yellow had a ball and had a mace ball and ball chain. and chain, a ball and chain. I that thought... was I don't know. I thought that was a bit meh, but I liked for Geki Bat. You know, I think it was like fans. I yep. thought that looked quite sweet. Yeah, you know, that looked quite sophisticated. Mm-hmm. But you know, they gave Red the generic sword. No, no it twin swords. Twin swords. Twin swords. They can combine. But, yeah, but I you know, love the swords. It's a dumb I... thing. I mean, it's like I'm indifferent to them because it's you know Red Ranger gets the sword again. 
what, did you want him to have the ball and chain? Yeah, I thought, well, no. You mean, right, when it came to the ball and chain, that was neither here nor there. The fans, yeah, they looked, again, they looked elegant. Unique. But, well, I say elegant. Unique as well, if you like. But I'm just like, so, yeah, you know, it's done before. But it's... And then, specifically, it's for red. But it's never. Like, you know, okay. Don't get me wrong. No, no, no. Tell me, I tell me. Shark characters funny. Tell me. Shark characters funny. Tell me, characters funny, tell me when the you saw. Tell me when you last saw one character wielding two swords. Oh. Exactly. But that, I mean, all right. If you like that, then that's fine. But I was just a bit meh. I was like, uh, all right. But again, the shark character Shaquille. I think what they called Shaquille or what? That was what they Shaq ran around. Shan. Yeah, Sharky Chan. Yeah. Uh, again, I was un- I was very underwhelmed by the weapon. But did the gazelle, penguin, and gorilla thing have weapons as well? No. Because you know, I'll mention Jungle Fury a little later. But in Jungle Fury, they actually get Spirit Rangers, and I'm just like, oh, yuck. Anyway, what do we think of the Henshin devices? Uh, just before that, uh, one more uh, weapon I forgot to mention was the the claw from the the, the super form. Uh, oh, I already mentioned that, but yeah. Uh, well, technically, that's the because weapon. That that's, that's the that's the weapons that the 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 the, the, the gorilla, the gazelle the from yeah the. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, as an acknowledgement, anyway. So I liked those claws. It. Like, again, it reminded me of like a very Wolverine-esque. If you wanted a nostalgia rush, then yes, from Kakaranger, from the Bear Claw. Uh, everyone's spoiling Kakaranger for me. Don't matter. Sorry. Kara. Oops. Yeah. Bear Claw. Anyway. Um, but it was a very nice little homage, as it were. Easter egg, if you want. Um, otherwise, for me, the... Uh, what was it you asked? What did I think of the... I you think of the henshin devices? I like the uniqueness of the um, gloves. As they took that away in Power Rangers, by the way. But I, about... I, I'm not even going to go there. Like you well, can, you there. can. I'm just going to run away on that. I okay. loved the gloves. I loved the uniqueness of it. I loved the sleekness of it. I never saw it coming from a mile away. Um, I loved uh, when uh, Go came in, when Gekivala came in, when he used a, a almost semi-traditional um, bracelet, but it was like a, a, a boxing ring bell incorporated into it. I thought genius. So it was a nice. But little... he uses that power up as well. And not just it's that, awesome. but also he, it was like a very a, a nice change, if you will, a nice um what's the word? They went all out for Geki Wolf though, man. No, what I mean by that is they had the uniqueness of the gloves, then they had a little throwback to your traditional bracelets, and then... What was Geki Chopper's henshin? I can't remember. See, he had a two parts, so he had his gloves, like traditional, but then he had also his 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 weapon, weapon his he weapon used to walk as around well. with it. Yeah, huh? I remember yeah. that. Um, what's more, uh, what I found was interesting was spoiler alert and story wise, Go tried to hench in using the gloves, but he couldn't. So Shafu's assistant created a unique um, bracelet to uh, match his key or his power aura style. So it was neither good or bad. It was pretty much in the middle, which I thought was genius. Um, over to you. What do we think of the Mecca? Right. I need a sip for this one. For the base three, so you get the lion... The wolf, the cheetah, and then like okay, appearance-wise, I actually didn't mind it. At least they, uh, the lion itself had a bit of heft to it. Um, when it came to Gektorja, the Megazord, it—that's what it was called. No, wait, hold on. Gektorja. 
Because there was... What's the one where they swap the yellow for violet? Jackie Tours Your Wolf. Right, fine, whatever. Okay. They don't want to me. Anyway, um... So, they... It, it, I felt it had a good sleek look to it, like a very... There was something about it, it felt like a very fighter, I can tell, like, it's... It, it felt thin. It felt a little more nimble. It felt yes, a little more nimble. yeah, that, that's the exact word, because it felt more agile than any of the other me- standard Megazords, like your bricky Megazords, if you will. It's blocky, but yeah. Blocky, yeah. It, it did feel more nimble, like more humanoid, and that was very unique for me. And what's more, his base weapon was a, a, a three-piece staff. As in, oh. a, not a tomfa, sorry, not a nunchuck, but a three-piece nunchuck. Okay, I mean, I like the base Gatai Mecha, or Toja, or whatever. But I thought it was really, you know, bearing in mind Geki Wolf was absolutely amazing. I thought they really half assed it on his mecha. I can yeah, see bearing it. in mind that these mecha are manifests of their spirit or key yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... I've felt, no, no. Could, you know, I mean, on one hand you could say, well, at least they didn't overblow it and make a custom buck. But on the other hand, it's like... Really, it's just a change of arm. You know, it's like... I actually didn't mind... I, I, I honestly didn't I'm mind... I'm sorry, the, I thought... I no, thought no, 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 no. No, I think... I I didn't mind for once that... I'm glad they didn't have the clusterfucks for once. I can see, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they should have made a clusterfuck. Don't get me wrong. Although, technically, they they've... Only... They, could have done something, they could have done something better than just changing the leg. They kind of... Did do a semi cluster fuck near to the end. You're Ish. talking about the rhino thing, aren't you? I think it's called Psy God or something. No, Psy dying. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Anyway, I'll get to that in a minute, but anyway. Um, it... I actually like the rhino mecha, but go on. Can I? You're yeah, gone. Right. Anyway, uh, so what I was trying to say was um, it. I've lost my train of thought. Yeah. So, with the armaments for the base form, you get the elephant uh, with a ball and chain and some extra parts to it. You get a... Yeah, those are just weapons for the mecha. Yeah. You get the shark, again, armaments and swords. You get the... Who am I missing? Bat, which you get bat's um, wings, but also be able to fly as well. So... But the gimmick of this was the fact that every time it finishes, his torso would uncomfortably yes. spin all around, vertically. No, sorry, mm. horizontally, like that. And automatically, I can tell this was so product merchandise screamer thing, if that makes sense. So... Yeah, whoop de doo da. I'm sorry. It wasn't like your computer generated blast everything to hell kind of thing. That's kind of thing, though. Overall, I think it kind of makes sense with the whole key manifest thing. I suppose. But it was very heavy on CGI. I don't know, just uh, yeah. Apart I just from, thought like, that was too heavy. Apart from, yeah, the combat were... scenes, apart from the combat scenes. You know, where they're fighting amongst buildings as they go. It's all CGI. I mean, I felt they could have done more in regards to those fight scenes. And that, come on, you're martial artist. You have your own style. Talk about the fight scenes. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll get back to that. Um, You've got, so, with Geki Wolf, yeah, I love the look of Wolf. However, as you mentioned, it's a shame that he's merely just a change of armaments as a leg. But... I could get over that, honestly. I, I can just leave that to one side, because they could have done so much worse, honestly. Um, they could have done worse, but I felt they could have done so much better. Agreed. Um, with Gek Chopper, he gets his own right. thing, that being like a very... Was it a chariot? No. 
No, that was Magic Ranger. Anyway, go on. You sure? Right. Yeah. He gets a armored tonk top rhino that it can transform itself into a megazord called Psydai O. Yeah. Right. This is where the ugh comes in. When they start slightly cluster effering, they literally just have Psydio in his animal mode. With the ranger like like a centaur sort of thing, wouldn't it? Ish. Like you take off the legs of Gektoja, plonk it on top of Psydio's so, yeah, remember... back. And then you have those two leg parts running alongside it. <laughs> and then you just literally charge into the enemy. That, I actually feel, was a bit better. Now, when they go into super form, they get an additional set of three. Oh, that was good. Well, yeah, go on. Yeah, this is where it gets a bit... Uh, you get a gorilla, a gazelle, and a penguin on a surf board or skateboard if you will or in this case when the zord comes in the board is flat or so hoverboard and I'm like really why but what's, this is... what's more what's more when they transform you get a more macho esque megazord compared to Gektoja and then what's the name of this one Gek Fire just Geki Fire. No, I don't mean. I the, the, give a crap. The mecha from the she Geki form just wasn't inspirational. I mean, what's more, you know, I mean, I could, I, I could see they were going for something original, like Penguin Gazelle. I mean, Gorilla's been done before, but Penguin and Gazelle. And I'm like, oh, you know, all right, points for being it's, original, it's, but they don't, what you know, they don't work as mecha, and they don't, yeah, you know, I think overall. You know, I mean, because this is a series where the mecha aren't able to fight on their own. They have to get it. Because if they don't, you know, they, you know, like, like, I think the best they could do on their own is just scratch. It's like, that's it. So they had to get it. And because they have to get it, you don't get to see each mecha in its element. And I think the one thing, you know, and again, you know, I mean, that's why I like the rhino, to be fair, the side rhino thing. You know, at least it had a bit of umph to it. And again, I just felt they cheated on Geki Wolf's mecha. But the one thing, and again, you know, like, the fight scenes were okay, I guess. And again, that's when they weren't being over-dependent on CGI. But the one thing, I'm not sure whether I thought this was funny or I thought this was annoying. Do you remember there was that little fly thing that would comment Don't even start. No, no, don't. Oh, my goodness. No, basically, uh, just before that, the finisher of Geki Fire was pretty much the similar effect to, or keeping true to the toys, in that instead of going that way, it would go this way. So literally, you have it spinning his arm going like that as a finisher. And I'm like, I remember the finishers. Because it was annoying. Right. Anyway, so that aside, um, yeah, it, honestly, I think they flopped. They completely flopped on Gek Fire. They had so much potential, but they didn't. And what's more, yes, you can combine. How much Gek potential do you have with the gazelle and the penguin? I meant as in they could have done so much more. They could have done something else. That's the point. Um, and then you can also, unfortunately, combine Gek Fire to Gek. Uh, sorry, Sidain, same way. Lose the legs. <laughs> we. Um, and yes. Now, um, before I get to buy, you get a amazing movie exclusive, but then used probably once or twice at the end of the series. Go on. The Leo's Lion. Geki Lion. Oh yeah, my goodness. That and then they had a lizard as well. I remember that. Comedian, now. yes. This was, now normally I do not talk about the movie exclusives, but just because this thing, no, stood, I remember. this thing stood out so much, you get, Leah gets a black lion with gold mane, and Melee gets a small chameleon, well okay, for Melee, for Leah, oh my goodness, wow, and that combines with Gektoja to make a Gektoja lion, I think? 
I, I barely remember the names. So. Anyway, my point is, is the armament he gets like the extra um, uh, armor, but also Leo's or the lion's tail becomes a badass sword. And what's more, um, you see near to the end of the series, spoiler alert, that Gekdorja combining with Saidain on top looks so good. The color works so well. It's not as boring as hell either. So it is so good to have not a clusterfuck, but having a nice little big finish-ish. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's me. Okay. Oh, and then, bye! As you were mentioning, thank you for not reminding me. Um, <laughs> bye is unfortunately this little. And I'm little. Fly! That he had every, his own storyline, though, didn't he? Every time there's a Megazord monster fight going on, Bye comes in and commentates on it. Because he starts off as Melee's little pet, and then he sort of has his own story. I'm like, why? Why, why, why would you have a... Why? Why? Oh. Shall we move on? Yeah, like I have a choice. Go on. Alright, so were there any episodes that stood out for you that weren't, you know, like, any, any episodes that stood out for you? Probably goes backstory. Okay. Well, I'll be oh, honest, and then and then and when they become super Geki Rangers, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, the, I remember. Let's see, because I remember like uh, Go's episodes coming in. I remember yeah. like Ken's episodes coming in. Yeah. I but like I remember. It. Do you remember the Christmas episode? No, and I don't really want to. Oh my god, no, that was like the funniest thing, because I think you had like the gorilla thing and Ken just going around dressed as Santa. I thought that was hilarious. I don't remember any of this, I don't know if, I think they did a hyper battle video, but I'm not sure. Uh, but let's see, alright, so moving on to the films, uh, let's see, because they did... Yeah, because I think they only... Did they do... What was the one? Because I don't actually remember the... Oh, wait, yeah, I do. All right, so they did three films. They did one with Bo Kenja. They did their own summer from the film. And then they did one with Go On to the Year After. I remember watching uh, their summer film, which was, for some weird reason, set in Hong Kong. Uh, I thought I actually thought they had. Yeah, you know, I thought the main thing that stood out in the film, in that film, was. I mean, again, you know, the fact that it was set in Hong Kong. They had some really awesome sets. You had them fighting on a beach. You had them fighting in like a nighttime city, yeah, you know, like an evening setting for the city. I thought it was really good. And again, I do remember the mecha that you mentioned. Uh, yeah, you know, but again, just on this night backdrop, it looks really awesome. I'll be honest, I actually don't. You know, where it was so many years ago that I've watched it. I don't quite remember the story. I remember they had to, I think it was like some sort of battle competition or something. Uh, but again, they went there, they met a whole, you know, they met like a good cast, they were fighting a lot, they were competing. And you know, and the mecha just looks really, you know, it just looks really good. The set so it's really awesome in this film. Going on to the Bokenja team up, I thought, I mean, the film, you know, the, like they brought uh, let me think now, because the Go, was it the, yeah, the Go Wanja film, they brought Rio and Melee back to life, but in the Bokenja film, it was more like a sort of epilogue story for the Bokenjas, so you had like Boken Red and Boken Pink like mocking about in space and stuff, and I don't really remember that much about it, but I remember it was quite cool, and then going on to the Go Wanja story, Go Wanja film, uh, I just thought, you know, there was a few good fight scenes. It was cool bringing Shafu and his assistant back. And, you know, it was just sort of like a typical mashup, really. 
but nothing really stood out in the Go Under film. But I do remember the Bokinger film did stand out a bit more, and their summer film actually did have some quality to it. So, uh, talking about the aesthetics of Gekki Ranger, what do we think of the music in Gekki Ranger? Besides the original soundtrack, I think, or the background music, before you even go to BGM, blah, 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 blah. I didn't mind the opening. No, it wasn't my favourite, as in, but it is good. I'm not going to deny that. It's nice and catchy and everything. I love, however, I love the theme tune they use for Go and the Super Geki Rangers. Those are very, they stick out for me. Holy shit. No, actually, that's more... That's, yeah, that's not even sort of an analysis I give. If anything, I can't quite remember so much about the BGM. Uh, if anything, you know, like, OP, I thought was pretty awesome. It, I rank it right up there. You know, you say, you know, whatever you just said. I really rate the OP. I uh, can't even remember... Nah. I can't even nah. remember what the end credits theme was, though. That's the weird um, thing. No, it's, um... Yeah, you're going to sing. This is it. I actually don't remember it off the top of my head. In fact, I don't remember it at all. You really want me to try and sing it for you? You can try and sing if you like. I sing enough on this show. Do you remember... Okay, imagine the ninja style of ending, but in a... Like a, um... Go for it, don't give it up. <gasps> yes! I remember that now. Go for it. And yeah, it's don't give it up. You mean don't give up? Oh, well, what? Yeah, I remember now. Well done. Oh. <laughs> no, I didn't like it. Anyway, so... Making me on. remember something painful. I couldn't even remember it at all. Good, I right. wish you didn't. Oh, no, that's gonna go that's gonna be in my head for the rest of the night now. Good. So what do you, what do we think of the choreography? Actually good. These are some of the best it, choreographies actually I have ever seen. Um like I'm not gonna deny all the martial arts in this, all the fighting scenes in this everything but the Megazord sequence was actually good. Fight wise, I actually I was, loved it. Me personally, because again, I think they depended more. Yeah. You know, no, wait, wait. Like, actually, I, I rephrase this. Once they start bringing in the Super Gekki Rangers, I feel that they now, then, after when they bring in the Super Gekki Rangers, they relied pretty heavy on um, wireworks. Well, that, that's what I was I was going to say. Like, yeah, I mean, not so much about the wireworks, but. Like, I felt that their whole, you know, like, you can rate the martial arts scenes and that, but it really depended heavily on the fact that these, you know, like, they kind of gone in a Power Ranger route sort of thing, where each ranger has a superpower, like a power outside of being in armor. So, like, you know, you had the blue with his, like, extra sort of ability. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not too sure that it was a natural born superpower or something they developed through being at that Geki school or whatever. But, you know, you had, like, um, you know, the yellow ranger with the speed, the blue ranger with the technique, and I think red was supposed to be strength, but I'm not sure. Uh, you know, like, they had, like, these sort of gift, you know, like, these gifted powers, if you will. So I kind of felt it kind of was a little heavy on that. But then, uh, you know, but then I'd say, like, what stood out for me choreography-wise was their use of weaponry. So, like, you know, when they had their weapons, ball and chain, swords, bands, whatever. They were it, so unique. You know, they, the, yeah, and the, yeah, and even before those were brought in and they had, like, just their Tom for a nunchaku, it really, you know, it kind of had a bit more, you know, it kind of had a bit more pizzazz to their weaponry skills. So I thought, yeah, I like that. Um, I'm. What I didn't like was the roll call. Um, I, no, no, I no, 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 no. I really like the roll call. No, I, I, I thought it was too long. It's like. Too long. We were standard. 
you you they mentioned the like unbreakable body, fantastic technique, um yeah, I which Bill, one, which mentioned and I can't even remember. What was the yellow one? I can't remember the yellow one. Oh, it's really gonna kick me now. No, because this is it. You've reminded me Unbreakable Body, but I do specifically remember Fantastic Technique and Iron Will, because these are phrases, even though Geki Ranger ended like eight years ago, I still use those phrases to this day. You know, I will be like, oh, you need, you know, like just in everyday dialogue, I'll be like, oh, you need, fan-. You know, I would just say you need better technique. I'll be like, you need better Fantastic Technique. And Iron Will, again, I just run, you know, like, you know, it's just a phrase I sort of consider that I need. I need Iron Will. It's, you know, these are two phrases that have actually stuck to me to this day. But no, I'd say roll call wise, it's standard. I mean, it's, no. you, know, and, you know, I can say it looks good, but they all meant to look good. And, you know, I'd say it was a standard roll call, really. But the two phrases, Fantastic Technique and Iron Will, I thought were epic. No. I'm sorry, no. I'm. I'm just. How can I say? Um. Oh. Um. Honest heart. Wow, I can see why I forgot that. Yeah. Really, honest heart. I don't All right. Move. Normally, I don't do this, but. Anyway, uh, so moving on, what do we think of the sets and locations of Geki Ranger? Um, well, starting with the headquarters, it felt like a very Bokenger-esque, um, but a bit with a bit more mats, uh, padding, as in for fighting purpose and such. But it did feel very like secret underground base kind of thing really um are you talking about the heroes the heroes base yeah i thought the heroes base looked really good and then but then it's kind of like the first episode makes it look like they're just like some massive corporation and then it's like everything's done in the basement after that see this is where if you throw Onto the other side. If you go to Leo's base, that is what a the proper, temple. The temple. The um, temple looks awesome. It is amazing. It almost looks like what, what a did traditional. What you make of the fact that it was all like graveyard based and like you know because you know I mean the monsters of the week were dead Revivals. monsters brought back. Yeah, revive. And even like their sort of uh, you know their soldiers were dead. But, you know, I kind of liked how they all started off looking exactly the same, apart from, like, a little logo on their head, and then, boom, and then they become whatever. Huh? You don't remember this? Right, because each Monster of the Week, they all looked exactly the same, like they looked like one of the soldiers, apart from they had, like, a little thing on the top of their head. And then, boom, they became oh, the Monster of the yeah, Week. yeah, I get you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. That's clever. Um, also, by the way, I just found out what um, Geki Chopper's one was, and it's Amazing Ability. Oh, okay. So that's his part of the roll call. Don't need that anymore. Okay, so let's try to wrap this up. So what do we think of the final episodes and just the ending of Geki Ranger? I like the way how how the story is in regards to the backstories and so on and so forth. Yes, the first half is pretty much like character development, long character development. But when it does kick in, when the story does kick in, it is so good. Um, the How the story ends, how they defeat Long, I'm not going to say how. Um, but note, note uh, what's that was it? a very bizarre final act. I actually liked the way that they did that, rather than your stereotypical kaboom. I loved the the alternate. I mean, stuff. I loved the development for long, as I've already said, and you know, it was a very typical cliche happy ending, and then what's his name goes off. Jan goes but... off and trains people, which I like that. 
It's a bit cliche, really, True, but, but I can't really complain. But you would have thought he'd stay in Japan rather than travel. That's all I'm saying. Meh. Exactly. Um, but honestly, I... Yeah, ironic, really, the Moby character traveling. Anyway. Still, I, I didn't mind it. Um, as a whole, would I recommend this to... Uh, let me see. As a generic fighting Sentai series, I would recommend this to first timers if you like that kind of thing. Uh, but, as a story as a whole and such, I would not recommend this to first timers because there is so much character development to actually in endure. Yeah. Yeah, that it takes a while. Um, otherwise, yeah, you, I'd say unless you're di uh, you know watch this as your second, third, whatever, or unless you're a diehard core Sentai fan like well we are, and so I. You don't need to be okay. Go on. No, I was going to say just uh, definitely not first time. I know what you're going to say not a first time, but anyway. Well, that's it. Yeah, because I would say. You know, I'd definitely recommend, you know, I wouldn't say you need to be diehard, but you don't, but I wouldn't recommend this as a first sentence, I assume, because you really have to in, endure it and engage with the characters, etc. Mm. And then even what you said right, you know, at the beginning of the summary, uh, that, you know, because even, even, like, for the martial arts and just all the other themes that you could recommend this series for, there are other series you could point to and be like, use that as your starting point. But Geki Ranger, it has to be like, yeah, you have to be a little familiar with Sentai, and then you do have to have a bit of patience, and then you do have to actually like Sentai, really. I mean, you know, I think unless like uh, me... Patience, unless go like on, John. <laughs> unless like me, unless like me, you know, like I particularly, you know, I latched on to how Rio seemed like an interesting character, and I followed it more for Rio than the heroes... You know, I'd say, you know, meh, you know, definitely not a start of Sentai in any way, shape or form. But I did like, but yeah, I think where it had a really good second half, and you know, you can tell, you know, and if you've got a keen eye like I have, lol, if you have a keen eye in general, you will spot that this series has potential, and then the second half it does get pretty good. That's just my opinion. And I'm done. Really? Wow, cool. Um, yeah, so that is that. Um, I think we will wrap this up. So that has been our review for uh, Duke and Sunday Geki Ranger today. Do um, join us next time. As always, do comment, like, I don't know, type whatever his head looks like. Weirdness of whatever, I don't know. Um... Anyway, as always, I've been Marcel Adabashida, he's been my token bro from the other side. It's Viva Man! And as always, join us next time, Vizu Cam! Vizu Cam. Alright, see you next time.